Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be discussing the variance and standard deviation for ungrouped data set. Without further ado, let's get this lesson started. Previously, we have defined the different measures of variation, and two of them will be discussed in this video. First, we have the variance. It is symbolized by small letter sigma squared for population and small letter s squared for sample. It is the average of the square distances of each datum from the mean. It is also considered as a parametric measure because it involves the mean. And we have these two formulas. One formula is for the variance of the population, symbolized again by the small letter sigma squared. And this one is the formula for variance for sample, symbolized by small letter s squared. So if you may notice, they are quite similar, except for their denominator. In the variance for the population, we just have the denominator n, whereas for sample, we have the denominator of n minus 1. So let us break down these formulas. Of course, we are familiar with this value, summation. It means you get the sum. And both of them contains summation. Also, both of them contains x, and that stands for the member in the data set. As for this symbol, mu, recall from central tendency, this is symbolizing the mean for population, and x bar is the symbol for the mean for sample. So, of course, if we're dealing with population, we will use mu, and for sample, we will use x bar. And capital N here is the number of population, and small n here refers to the sample size. So basically, when we're dealing with population, we will just be leaving the denominator with n. However, if we're dealing with sample, our denominator should be n minus 1. As for their numerator, it's just the same. What we're going to do here is for every data, we will subtract it with the mean. Then their difference will be squared. And then all the differences, all the squared differences will be added to get the entire numerator. Later, we will have an example on how to use this formula. As for standard deviation, it is the third measure of variation symbolized by small letter sigma for population and small letter s for sample. It indicates how closely each datum is clustered or scattered from the mean. And since it involves the mean, it is also considered a parametric measure of variation. So these are the formulas for the population SD or population standard dev and for sample standard dev. So basically, if you paid attention to the previous slide, this is just the formula or this part is the variance for the population and this is the variance for the sample. So in other words, to get the standard deviation, we will just be dealing with the positive square root of the variance. So in other words, we can reduce these formulas into simpler terms like this. We will just take the square root of the variance regardless if that is for population or for sample. So again, to better understand, let's have the following examples of ungrouped data. Suppose that we will be solving the variance and standard dev of this sample, 56, 35, 12, 20, 14, 28, and 15. Recall from our discussion about measures of central tendency, this is also the same given. That is why in that video, we arrived with a mean of 25.71. If you haven't watched that video, I'll just put the link here in the upper right corner of this video. So to better visualize how we are going to deal with this variance and standard deviation, let us write these values in a table. Again, we are just writing it in a table. This is not yet the FDT or the frequency distribution table because the first column are not classes. They are just simply the members of the sample. Notice that the second column is labeled as x minus x bar. Since we are dealing with sample, 
mean will be denoted as x bar. It means that every value on the first column will be subtracted by this mean. So let's do that one by one. And then for the third column, we will square the value from the second column. So to facilitate an easy discussion, we will solve it by row, meaning we will answer this first. Afterwards, we go directly to the third column. That is, we have 56 minus 25.71 will give us 30.29. Squaring this value, 30.29, we have 917.4841. So in here, do not round off values yet. If this column contains numbers with four decimal numbers, leave it as it is. We will be doing the rounding off once we are on the last step of our solution. So continuing, we have 35 minus 25.71 is 9.29. 9.29 squared will give us 86.3041. Next, for 12, 12 minus 25.71, we have negative 13.71. Squaring this value, we have 187.9641. Then we continue with 20. 20 minus 25.71 is negative 5.71. Squaring this number, we have 32.6041. Doing the same with 14, we have negative 11.71. Squaring this value, we have 137.1241. We're down with the second to the last item. We have 28 minus 25.71 or the mean. We will have 2.29. Squaring that value, we will have 5.2441. And finally, for this last row, we have 15 minus 25.71 is negative 10.71. Squaring this number, we have 114.7041. And to complete this table, we will be adding all the entries for the third column. Doing that, we should arrive with a sum of 1,481.4287. There. So, we have successfully completed this table. Let me just rewrite it more legibly. Okay, right there. So we will be getting this value. We'll write it here. And then we also count how many sample are involved here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's why n is 7. And then recall the formula for variance. We have summation of the quantity of score minus mean squared over n minus 1. So we will just substitute these values. 7 minus 1, you know that will be 6. And then dividing these two numbers, our variance is now 246.90. So computing the variance is very crucial because even if you have just one error in this column or in the third column, even if one digit is miscalculated, it will greatly affect the variance itself. And if variance is affected or variance is wrong, we can also say that standard deviation will also be wrong because standard deviation is just the positive square root of the variance. So to compute for the standard dev, we will just be taking the square root of 246.90, giving us a standard deviation 
of 15.71. And that is our standard dev. Going further to the next example, we have this sample, 19, 35, 26, 50, and 0. Recall that this is also the example 2 in our discussion about the mean. That's why we already identified the mean of this sample to be 26. So, I challenge you to solve for the variance and the standard deviation of this sample. Again, let us use this table to better visualize how each of the values will be computed. I'll be pausing for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, I'll resume the discussion and let's see if your answer is correct. Okay, so each of the entries in the first column will be subtracted by 26 and those differences will be squared for this third column. Afterwards, add all the entries of this third column to get the last cell. Your table should have the entries like this. Again, if there are errors in your entries, I think... You have miscalculated a few items, so make sure to double check your solution. So going further, again, we will write the value of this last cell here. And N, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's why we have N equals 5 here. And then just recall the formula for variance and then substitute. We have 1,382 for the numerator and 4 for the denominator. 4 came from 5 minus 1 because 5 is the value of n. Dividing these numbers, we have a variance of 345.50. Next, we solve the standard deviation. That is just the square root of 345.50 or simply 18.59. Oh, by the way, I think I forgot to mention a while ago that for the final answer of the variance and the standard deviation, we will always round off to the nearest hundreds or to the nearest second decimal number. If we are done with the entire solution and we have arrived with the value, that's the time when we will do the rounding off. However, if we are just completing the entries in the table here, there is no need to round off the values, okay? So, those are the variances and the standard deviations of the two examples. But wait, we have another question regarding these examples. Comparing these two examples, we have this first data set with a mean of 25.71, a variance of 246.90, and this standard deviation, 15.71. For data set 2, we have the following data and the following mean, variance, and standard deviation respectively. Now, the question is, which between data set 1 and data set 2 is more dispersed? When we say dispersed, it also means scattered away. So, which between these two data sets are more scattered away from the mean and why? Again, I'll give you 10 seconds to think about this. After 10 seconds, we'll resume to reveal the answers. Recall from the introduction of measures of variation, we have stated there that the larger the value of the variance or the standard deviation, it means that the data are more scattered or dispersed away from the mean. So comparing the measures of variation in terms of their variance and their standard deviation, obviously, in terms of their variance, we have data set to as the greater value in terms of their variance. And also, for standard deviation, we have the value for data set 2 as the greater one. So meaning, based on these data, 
the variance and the standard deviation of the two data sets, we can say that data set 2 is more dispersed simply because it has a higher variance and standard deviation as compared to data set 1. So that is how we interpret the different measures of variation. In the next video, we will be discussing how to solve for the variance and the standard deviation for group data. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.